And um, sorry about that. Again, the, the technical issues I'm having, I'm, I'm hearing an echo. Um, but so if you if you don't know me or um, haven't been to the channel before, my name is João Frigerio. I've been in the sports industry for about um, 15 years. I've been in that position where many of you watching this are. Uh, I am an alumnus of one of these master courses. I did the FIFA Masters many years ago. I've uh, been trying uh, to help graduates uh, from that master to you know, start their career in sport. And in fact, was actually doing that. That's uh, where the idea of the uh, job fair came from. Now, if it's your first time here at uh, this um, uh, at our YouTube uh, channel, please, you know, let me ask you to subscribe, hit the bell sign to get the notifications. Uh, we do have a series of interviews in the, in, in, in the channel as well, where we talk. Well, today we're talking with two people. Uh, actually, we're going to be three. Uh, that's a recruit for major companies. Uh, we also talk to high-profile executives uh, in the industry. We're on LinkedIn, on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram. But, um, everything is as I work in sports, so very easy. And you know, this is enough about the events, about uh, me, about uh, the channel. Let's let me introduce our distinguished guests uh, for today. Uh, here with me, uh, we, we're scheduled to have three participants. Um, Glenn Klein is a little late with a, a bit of a technical difficulty as well, but uh, he will be joining soon. Uh, he is a deputy director for uh, Eurovision Sport. But with us, we have Tim Palm, who is Vice President of International Recruitment at ING, uh, Angela and Deborah, and uh, Fabio Tucci, Head of Legal and uh, Human Resources at uh, Juventus Football Club. Hello, Tim. Hello, Fabio. I Hi. hope you can hear me well. Very good. Thank you. Good. Yeah, I can hear you. Great. Let me start. Uh, asking you guys to maybe do a quick introduction of um, of the companies and uh, of your business. Um, Tim, if I can maybe start with you, uh, with uh, ING and Endeavor, please. Sure, okay, okay, so, um, so I'm Tim Palmer, as, as Zhao said, I'm, I'm the, the Vice President of International Recruitment for um, in the Endeavour Group, um, and, and for those who don't maybe know the kind of wider in, in Endeavour Group, we're made up of a number of, of organisations. Uh, the kind of the major ones being uh, WME, which is the big talent agency, UFC, the Ultimate Fight Championship, and and and, I, and IMG. Um, so I run a, a a team here based in London, and actually a team in in, in New York as well. Um, and we we cover um, recruitment for. Endeavor across across the board. Um, I've been with the business for about two and a half years, um, and actually prior to that, um, I worked for a kind of sports headhunting firm for a little while. And before that, I was in the kind of entertainment industry. So I spent quite a lot, a number of years working uh, within the music industry, and uh, but 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 moved into sport uh, coming on for well just over just over 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 three years ago. Three years ago uh, uh, now, so um, yeah. As I say, that's me. Uh, we we have we have in, internal recruitment teams. We, uh, most of our, our recruitment directly directly now nowadays, as I say, through myself or or, or, one, or one of my teams. Okay. Well, I hope that everyone could hear you, uh, Tim. For some reason, you are not showing. Um, yeah. No, I'm definitely not on. Definitely not on mute. I am on my screen now. Now, Fabio, show. Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I can go. No. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm glad to, to be here to, to present uh, a bit myself. I'm in charge of legal human resources in Juventus. Uh, and uh, um, we are facing, uh, as, as Juventus, uh, a, a very important moment because I think. Uh, uh, we are not only working uh, as uh, one of the, the major the top uh, football club in Europe uh, on the field, on pitch, but also off the pitch. So uh, I, I think uh, when we we will talk uh, a bit more about uh, about Juventus organization, uh, or I can explain something to you uh, about uh, how we are working now in HR, but in general, uh, giving you an overview of, of Juventus, uh, uh, I think will be interesting uh, um, to explain uh, um, our values, uh, our activity of the pitch, uh, and uh, and, and so on. And uh, I worked in the past for uh, the Olympics, for Torino Olympics, and for a bit for uh, Salt Lake Olympics before uh, Torino. Uh, so I'm uh, uh, used to work in sports, and uh, I, I think uh, um, I, I'm a passion about, about, about sport, of course, uh, uh, because uh, um, you, you, it, it's important to, to be passionate to uh, to work in, in sports, of course, due to the, the stress activity, to the, uh, the the time you have to to dedicate to, to work, to work life balance at a certain level, of course. So um, I think this is just a brief introduction. Uh, yeah, I, I was um, Fabio. I was asking you, you told about um, your what you're sort of expecting. Uh, and you said that um, you're a fan. Uh, people that are working that want to work for Juventus don't need to be a Juventus fan, right? No, I think people working for Juventus um, must be passionate about sport, about uh, about um, of course uh, work to be dynamic, to be dedicated. Uh, but um, it's not so material they to be fan of Juventus. It's important. It, it can be important, but it's not so important. So I think they can be passionate about sports and enthusiast, but not uh, in any case fans or ultras. It's not. It's not the case, of course, because um, you have to be uh, to, to work in sports uh, uh, neutral, uh, and I think it's important. Uh, to love sports, but not to be so passionate, so fun. Okay. Tim, you uh, already participated in two editions of the I Work in Sports job fair. How should uh, candidates prepare for the day to come and speak with you? Yeah, I, I think I think that the, the main, can you hear me okay, by the way? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. So I, I, I think, I think the, uh, the 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 main piece of advice that I would I would give, and as I say, having been at the the, the previous two fairs, which are which are excellent, by the way. But um, I, I think the number one thing I would say is is actually about about researching. <clears throat> Sorry, excuse me. I think that there's a lot of really really great sports organisations that are going to be there in in, in in a month's time, and. I think there's kind of plenty, plenty of opportunity, you know, given it's kind of a month away to really kind of go away and research the businesses that are going to be there, the businesses that you're specifically interested in, in, in talking to as well. I think that's kind of really, really important because I think when you when you go up, because obviously, you know, certain people will be interviewing for certain roles, which is great, but there's also a lot of kind of more speculative type meetings that will take place. And I think when you're going up to, 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 to talk to to IMG or going up to talk to, 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 to Juventus or you're going up to talk to Genius or whatever. I think it's important that the, the people also understand, the, the, the people that are representing those organizations also understand that you know a little, a little bit a little bit about them. So for me, the kind of the real key I would say is, 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 is to research the organizations that you're, that, you're, that you're going to talk to. And the other point I would also make, which I think is really, really important, is, is have, a, have an idea a little bit about what you're keen to do. 
um, you know, um, again, it, it, there, there'll be a lot of different kind of job opportunities there, or even kind of general kind of capacity. And just so, just think long and hard about, you know, if it's marketing that you want to go down, or if it's finance, or if it's legal, or if it's, you know, if it's the kind of commercial route. Have have some understanding about 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 what you want to do. So when you go and talk to a representative of that organisation, don't sort of just go up and say, hey. What do you do, and what have you got for me? That that sort of thing, if that makes sense. So, 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 research on 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 both levels, I'd say, is my kind of key advice prior prior to going. Yeah, definitely. One thing that I was uh, going to say is from some feedback that uh, I had, uh, some feedback that I had uh, from last year was um, that people should research the companies that they're going to speak uh, with. I, I heard a lot of sort of companies saying that, um, you know, they are interested in talking about themselves, they're interested in presenting the company, but I think it gets a bit tiring if every, uh, you know, person after person come, they need to talk about, you know, the IMG business or whatever business that is. I think it would be more interesting for the company if uh, the candidates would come already with a good idea, maybe not in details, and they would ask about more details um, about the company, but already have a clear idea of how he or she as a candidate could, you know, benefit or could be uh, could provide some benefit for uh, for the company, for, for the recruiter. Why they should hire uh, them in a way more than you know, the, then trying to understand what that uh, the company offer. I th if they can uh, do that, I think will be will help them uh, a lot when they come to to speak with the um, with, with well with the recruiters. Yeah, I just well, I just make another point on that if I'm if I measure, but you know, it's it's about industry trends as well. It's about you know again that's what I kind of mean. You know what what's happening in the industry? Where is the industry going? Why is it going in a certain direction? And they need to be able to. To understand that, or have a have a have, have a, a kind of a clear thought process around that. To, to your point, Joe, I completely agree. Brent, we have Glenn uh, joined us. Glenn, thank you for, for 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 joining us. Can you hear us? I I can I can. Can you hear me? Okay. Yep. Good, good. Yeah, Apolo apologies well. for being apologies for for turning up late, guys. Um, not not a good start for for interview practice, by the way. <laughs> no, don't, don't worry. We're pretty much at the start. We we had a bit of confusion yeah. with technical problems here. I'm I'm hearing myself uh, three times uh, every time I, I I talk to you. But um, Glenn, maybe if I can sort of start uh, start with you, and um, we received some questions from from uh, people sort of beforehand, and. Um, you know, we can say that uh, what well, the landscape, you know, uh, the work landscape is changing dramatically in this sort of past sort of 20 years. Uh, research, you, you showed that uh, millennials don't simply look for a job nowadays. They're looking for a purpose. And uh, I'm sorry, that we're still having a, a Tim in, in, in the screen, but um, I'll try to get Glenn there. Yeah, sure. Anyway, anyway how, how, how is Eurovision Sports embracing this uh, new, uh, w the new generation of workers? I think you can give a glimpse of what um, Eurovision Sports is and what you're looking for in a candidate uh, when your colleagues come to the job fair, what they'll be looking for in terms of profile. And you can address that issue as well of the new generation of uh, workers. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, well, well, Eurovision Sport is um, a representative organization. We represent uh, all of the major public media organizations across the European continent and uh, North Africa. So it's a, it's a population base of, of roughly 1 billion that we, we, we cover. Uh, and we represent the, the organizations, the broadcasters, both TV and radio, um, both commercial and public service. Uh, some, many of our members are also commercial, commercial broadcasters, but 
predominantly the free to wear space. Um, and free to wear means a lot of things now. It's maybe free to all is is one way of terming terming it, which is uh, which also embraces digital technologies. But but you know we're talking about the traditional broadcasters that many many people know very well: BBC, SRG in Switzerland, uh, you know ITV in the UK, also France Tele, you know uh, right the way across from from Russia to Iceland, from from Norway to Morocco. Um, and uh, you know our job and and my job in particular is uh, is on the sports rights acquisition side of things. So we acquire uh, content on behalf of our members in the sports space, um, uh, which uh, which are, which our members uh, pay for. We're not an agency; we're a representative organisations. So uh, so our our members pay a, a a kind of membership fee, and that's how we're funded. Um, and we acquire rights in a collective sense uh, across the board. We partner with many agencies. We, we, we partner with IMG on a, on a number of things. We partner with ESPN. Uh, and we work, with, we work with some commercial, commercial uh, agencies also. And uh, we have, we have partner, uh, partner agencies such as Spring Media who operate for us in, in the Latin American market and things like that. So I suppose in terms of, in terms of um, you know, the, the kind of purpose-driven piece, you know, we're about kind of ma- making, ensuring kind of public access to key sports, uh, sports events. So you know, uh, you know, I've worked in I've worked in both commercial media and public media on the broadcaster side. My, my background is is journalism and uh, production, um, uh, and and uh, and I've worked worked across the industry for the last twenty five years. Uh, you know, in terms of purpose, uh, it's a it's about kind of ensuring that the public get to uh, view the World Cup, the FIFA World Cup, the Olympic Games, the Paralympic Games. IAAF uh, athletics uh, right away the way across the the Olympic uh, the Olympic uh, uh, sports uh, for free um, and uh, you know that people have have access to these events so so I think there's a real strong kind of public purpose there and there's a very strong uh, identity uh, with 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 the uh, with sport and you know kind of real purpose in kind of uh, fostering sport and fostering talent um, but also uh, you know. But based on our membership and in terms of local markets, so you know each of our each of our members are are key key media players in in their markets. They're not the only media players in their markets. We're very very keenly aware of our of our position in the ecosystem, the media ecosystem. Uh, but it's um you know it's a it's a it's a dynamic landscape and it's a it's a it's a dynamic um, environment with regard to acquiring sports rights. All right, uh, Tim. So how about you for someone that? Um... Don't don't want to simply to go and work for an agency, but they want to change the world. Um, what? Uh, how is it uh, for these people that uh, are entering the market and uh, going to work for IMG? Um, I think you know, for us, obviously, we're we're, we're, we're a sizable organization, and you know, it's, um, uh, uh, as as was just saying, you know, across across many many different many different areas. I mean, if you look at look at IMG. Kind of make up is I suppose you, you've got a licensing business, you've got a media business, you've got uh, an, an, an events business, you've got a fashion business. But you know, I suppose the the, the areas that we concentrate on mostly within within sport tend to sit within our events world and also within as well. So, and I think ultimately, what we we, we know we we recruit across the board for that. I mean, you know, I mean, I'm a I'm a I'm a recruitment person. You know, and I've worked, as I mentioned, I've worked in different industries. I've been in the entertainment. I've worked in publishing. I've worked in broadcast. I've worked in, in, in the music industry. Um, but actually, my kind of real passion is, is, is working in sport, which is what led me to work at, work at IMG. So my, my, what I'm saying in a roundabout kind of way is that there's, you don't necessarily have to, to, to be in a specific lane to be able to come and, come and work in sport. And I think what, what I, you know, coming to someone like IMG is, you know, you can work in, in IT and technology and still work in, in our space, which is sport. You can work in finance. You can work in legal. You can work in HR. You know, so so really, um, we are very keen on on bringing in a very sort of diverse range of individuals in, in, in into our business. You know, from 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 multitude of different kind of kind of kind of backgrounds and different potentially even different career paths prior uh, to to come to coming into in, into sport. Um, you know, I think sport. 
massively reflects the kind of the wider entertainment industry as as as, as a whole and you see a lot of people um moving from maybe more kind of corporate environments coming into in, in, in into this world more and more so but to, so but to answer your question we have quite a sort of diverse range of kind of opportunities and that that can be anything from sort of i don't know tech to corporate to sales to marketing to finance to to, to, to IT etc so so we're, we're quite open and it's about actually just having that that passion and that kind of core skill set to come come and work at an organization like IMG okay okay Fabio uh, this is actually a question to all is something I received from many people uh, the same question uh, about nearly 50% of the people doing these uh, masters uh, management uh, courses in, in Europe actually come from outside Europe. So we'd like to know about the, the policy in the three uh, companies on, on your companies about uh, concerning non-Europeans. Do they have a shot? Is there a chance for them to, to work with you? I'll start with uh, Juventus, Fabio, I think you're on mute. And then um, Glenn and Tim. Oh, Fabio is muted. Glenn, can we <laughs> sure. wait? That's Fabio. Can, yeah. we, can we start with you? Until I, I'll try unmute Fabio. Glenn. Sure. Okay. Uh, we 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 don't have any particular problem with people from outside uh, Europe uh, working working with us. We've quite a few colleagues. Uh, I suppose linguistic skills are very important in, in, the, in the role, in the jobs we have, because it is a pan-European organization with membership from, uh, you, know, uh, you know, right the way across Europe and different, different languages is a, is a definite advantage. English is obviously the lingua franca of all of, all of our businesses. So, uh, you know, kind of very, very good competency in English is essential. Um, but, but outside of that, uh, there's, no, there's no restriction uh, on or, or any kind of policy with regard to to where people come from, um, you know, I think it would be you know it's an important it's important to have a diversity. You know? Tim, um, for you know positions with IMG, and you are also a global company. Yeah, I mean exactly, you're exactly right, Joe. At the end of the day, we are we are a global global business. You know, I mean, it's a um, I've just been three weeks in 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 the states, and now I'm now I'm back in London. We have this is it all over over Europe, in 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 the US, um, in in Asia as well, um, and also we have kind of joint business, business venture business down in in South America as well. So so ultimately, no, yeah, look, we 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 don't necessarily sit here and say, you know, you you have to be able to work in Europe to come and work for us at all. And I think uh, we are. A much more joined up global organization I, I think over the last kind of four to five years in, 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 in indeed and, and actually just purely from a recruiting function you know we are talking across the board all the time you know with with the guys that we work with in Asia right through you know across the globe through us you know Europe Middle East um, then across the kind of US and, and, and South America. So no, no. Anyway, to, to your point, Jao, we are a, we are a global organisation, and therefore we look at a, a global population. And, and, and as 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 Glenn was just saying, you know, diversity is really really important. Um, so um, you know, we we are open to all. Great, uh, great, Tim. Uh, Juventus, on the other hand, is an Italian. It's from Turin. Although I think you're uh, opening offices overseas now, but Fabio, how is it um, for um, people that are not Europeans that would like to work for Juventus? No, yes, I think for uh, for us uh, um, there are no problem of borders of EU or not EU. Uh, we are international. We we work in international environment, of course. Uh, because uh, it's in the nature of sports, in the nature of our activity. Uh, and in Italy, it's not so common, but uh, I, I think uh, um, we are acting in this way and uh, we, we are very happy to make the mix work uh, with all different cultures in order to, to understand and to reach all the targets uh, we, we need. We, 
we are talking about uh, um, to to reach different cultures uh, because uh, Europe is one thing and uh, for football Asia is uh, is another of course so uh, you have to meet different needs uh, different uh, interests and uh, millennials women and so it's important to to hire international people uh, different from the not only european uh, italian one uh, mostly on digital uh, of course uh, uh, on communication side marketing uh, sponsorship uh, and so on we are opening a branch in hong kong um, now uh, during during these these days um, for for this reason in order to to reach another another country to uh, count different countries uh, and uh, to be there not from Italy but uh, being uh, in, in Asia uh, I think it's better of course okay and um, just to uh, clarify as well to sort of people watching uh, the question of diversity in, in sports we're four um, whitish uh, men uh, here but at the fair, there will be representatives. There will be, of course, uh, many women that we will be recruiting there as well, um, of different ethnicities. Ethnicities. Uh, this is just a coincidence, um, I guess, and I, I suppose that uh, all of your companies have a policy uh, about that as well, as, as as we discussed. No discrimination at all, and uh, all are welcome. I. You saw the teaser that I published uh, this morning, and um, it had to do with the question of salary expectations. And this is a question that I get from uh, from a few people, and myself as well, uh, passed uh, by situations like that uh, many years ago. When you apply for a job and a company asks you for a salary, for your salary expectations, and you just entering sort of the, the markets uh, at a relatively low or entry or mid-level is different. So I think if you're very top and then, you know, you can make many uh, sort of demands, uh, are always fi find ourselves uh, in a difficult position because we would say sometimes salary is not even that important. We want to start a, a role, we want to start a job, and, and then once we're in, we see how how we develop. Why why is that? Um, if that a company's ask for salary expectations, when in the end of the day, it will be what's you know they will pay the range that uh, they offer. Wouldn't be simpler if that was advertised, and then if someone uh, wants to earn fifty grand a year, simply wouldn't apply for a job that pay, that pays thirty or thirty five. Tim, do you want to start with that? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, I think it's an interesting point, and I kind of take your point. And I think you, you, you kind of highlighted it a little bit already because it very much depends. I feel on the level of the job that you are a advertising or kind of let's say recruiting for or headhunting for. Uh, at a more senior level, it could well be that there's a certain budget, for example, that's in in mind, um, and you don't necessarily want to divulge that budget into the wider market at that moment in time. Um, so therefore you will be talking to people, understanding really what, what their expectations are. And therefore, if it's therefore in line with what you've got in your mind, but, but also budgets can kind of change. I think, I, I think the way that people recruit has changed a little bit as well as well. I think in, it's about finding the right individual to kind of fit that job as opposed to saying, this job pays thirty-five thousand pounds a year, for example, and and therefore, um, you know, if you don't fit in that bracket, we're not going to talk to you. I think the reason people ask for, and the reason we ask for expectations, probably even more so, is like we just want to be guided as to roughly where this individual is is thinking within the marketplace. Um, so it doesn't necessarily mean that if someone maybe is a little bit their expectations are a little bit higher we're going to rule them out it might be that it's just part of the conversation that we have but at that point again you know 
blasting salaries all, all, all over the place. Again, businesses don't necessarily always want to do that because it might be to your competitive advantage not to as well. So hopefully that answers your question. But I think it very much depends on the level, which is what you were saying earlier, uh, earlier, Zhao. Maybe at a more junior level, it's more open. But definitely as you go up the ladder, it becomes probably more of a kind of a, uh, a, a guarded sort of conversation. Yeah, does anybody else want to make a comment on that? No, I, I mean, I, I, I'd agree with Tim. I, I think it's it's kind of more of a filter. Uh, it's used as a filter to filter out candidates that are kind of their expectations are are sky high and really not within the the remit of the of the role. Um, but my, my my general tendency would be an advice would be not to not to rule yourself out. Um, you know, if, if something's pitched at director level, you know it's going to be a very senior role within an organization, therefore a salary that is commensurate with that. But I think if something, you know, if if you're coming into a new organization, keep an open mind on salary. Uh, obviously, you know, everybody needs to put bread on the table, so it needs to fit your needs. But don't rule yourself out by by coming in with crazy expectations at the beginning. Would be my advice. So I I, I think um, I can go on. Yeah, no, I I think it's it's important that uh, the expectation of the of the candidate. Um, is uh, consistent with with the budget of the company, of course, and on the other side, uh, we are not talking only uh, about uh, uh, consideration, but we are talking also compensation. We are talking also about uh, a total reward statement, about uh, flex benefit, about uh, um, life balance, uh, life work balance, uh, about well-being, uh, about wellness, about all other um, package of con consideration we are talking about. So I, I think it's important to um, to understand from from the candidate uh, what's the um, what they need to to be. Um, to, to make the offer compelling and exciting for, for the candidate, of course. And uh, um, for this reason, uh, I think uh, um, it's better to, to ask to the candidate uh, during the interview, the job interview, um, what he's expecting uh, in order to move forward, not to waste time also. Because the risk is to waste candidates, to waste time, so uh, I think it's a good uh, way to, 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 to go on, a, to, to narrow in on uh, the right compensation. Okay. Uh, I think maybe the last question from me before we go to some questions that are arriving um, from uh, people watching us uh, live now. It has to do with, you know, a lot of people doing masters uh, in sports management sometimes they are let's say over 30 years old they have managed uh, 5 10 20 people in different roles maybe in engineering maybe in something outside of sports and they come and they spend a year uh, studying and trying to uh, you know prepare themselves to enter the, the sports industry and money is not sort of the, the issue for them. And, and they find themselves in that very sort of difficult situation where, okay, I'm over 30 years old, but I don't have the uh, experience in sports to apply for a position of, I don't know, an account manager or an account director in a company like IMG or, or any, of the, any of your companies. But on the other hand, they are willing to give that step back and say, no, I would take even an internship, a traineeship, uh, or I go as a, as a coordinator, and then I know that in one, two uh, years' time, I can sort of climb positions fast. Um, but they're not really given the opportunity. Uh, many of those finishing the Masters get replies saying that they are, they are overqualified. It's a difficult uh, position to be in. My question to the three of you is, what, are, what is your advice for people in, in that situation? Do you want me to go? Yeah, please, Tim. Yeah. Um, my advice is actually to push back. 
right? Because I think, um, you know, when I look back now and I, I look at the sort of the more potential kind of maybe, I guess, sort of entry level roles that we have in, in into our organization or the kind of summer grad programs that we run or the intern programs that we run, they're open to they're open to anyone to to, to apply to it. Um, I agree that it wouldn't be a problem. Sorry, if because uh, normally I, I suspect that when you design some positions, you have already an image in your head. It's probably people coming out of university, 22, 23 years old. Uh, you wouldn't rule out someone that is 33, 10 years uh, older. I mean, that's, that's actually, willing I, to yeah. I would say not necessarily at all. I, I, you know, I think I, that we and, and and that you know. Well, one of the things that we've that we've started to do here at IMG is we we brought in someone specifically to focus on early careers, but that doesn't that doesn't necessarily mean it's early careers, i.e., someone that's just come out of school or university or something like that. It's maybe someone who's early in their career in sport. You know, people. You know, if you're a, a lawyer or a finance or you know or, or anyone, you know, there's nothing from stopping you to come. And and, and and apply to us and you know and if, and if for some reason you 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 get a rejection and the rejection says we think you're overqualified for this position well push back that's what we that's what we're here for so and 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 you know uh, we we don't mind that in any way shape or form so I I I, I actually think you know um, especially as we operate in a more and more diverse world and more and more diverse industry i um, we'd absolutely encourage that 100 percent fabio and glenn do you want to comment on that say so I, I think we we employ candidates with uh, with experience uh, without experience but uh, um we we, we think uh, we, we have to work on a case-by-case -case basis because it depends uh, we can hire also People, as you said, um, that has to, to make uh, one step or two steps back uh, in order to work with Juventus because Juventus is a love brand. Juventus is a love brand, so I understand uh, people want to work for, for Juventus and not depending on uh, age or skills or if they, they have to change careers or to, to change paths. So we we decide on a case by case basis and basis and we already did it uh, and I think without uh, without issues. So we are uh, very open. Right. You just uh, answered a question from uh, Marius Zanin that I uh, was asking about uh, what uh, Juventus expects um, from employees to help to uh, build and grow that position of a global love mark as, it, as he said and a love brand as as, as you put it uh, glenn you any comments yeah I, I i mean i um i find it hard to understand how anyone can be overqualified for a role i think i think the more life experience you have you know the the, the better geared you are for 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 the jobs market and i think you know, I think, you know, a finance background, a legal background, a journalistic background, they're all huge advantages in the world that, 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 that we, we work in. Um, and, uh, you know, to have that to be, to be numerous or to understand legal and contractual uh, um, dynamics is, is a massive advantage. Um, and, and also to have had a bit of experience under your belt in another walk of life. Um, I suppose an awful lot comes down to me, for, uh, you know, to the, to the personality fit. You know, if you're the right type of person, you know, I think ultimately uh, it's a it's a it's a people game that we're in. Uh, you have to be able to engage with the uh, rights holders. You have to be able to engage with multiple stakeholders like our membership, and you have to have good people skills. So if you've got good people skills and good life skills, you, you're in a very strong position to to begin a career in, in yeah, totally in, in rights negotiation. One hundred percent, as per experience and experience of other sort of friends. Um, it is exactly about that, uh, Glenn, I think um, you are completely right. The problem I think that um, many people face is that um, they don't, many don't have the opportunity to get their sort of personality and skills come across because sometimes they're crossed right uh, at the beginning because maybe they're too old, for instance, or too experienced for, for the position, which is actually an advantage uh, for you guys that are coming to the job fair and to the candidates uh, coming to the job fair as well, because 
this uh, personal contact um, is crucial and it has helped a lot, including people that have applied for a position, was rejected at the beginning, even for an interview, and uh, were able to go there and have that uh, conversation with the recruiter and end up uh, getting the job. We have, a, we have another question, um, and this one concerns online courses, for instance, uh, Coursera uh, and, and other platforms. Sometimes they have short courses, not masters or so necessarily. Um, Tarek Janovic is um, asking, you know, what's the opinion of uh, the panelists about that? Are they considered, uh, is it worthwhile including in their CV? And I will add to the question and make it more broad because many people watching this and coming to the job fair do master's uh, courses. Also, what's sort of the importance and, and relevance uh, when they put in their CV that they did the master's A, B, or C? Uh, what's, you know... How, how is that... Uh, yeah, how, how's that uh, in their benefit? Do you want me to go, Joe? Yes, please. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I think I think anything that you do that you feel is relevant is relevant, right? I mean, I mean, ultimately, if you're if you're taking a, a master's, the, the only thing that I, I I would say to people, um, and this is more of a more of a CV thing, I think, than anything else, is don't ever assume that people know or, un or understand. So, you know, if you're doing a, 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 a master's course and there's topics in there that you have done or work experience that you've done within that <clears throat> within within that course, tell people about it. Make sure it's on your on your CV because I think the amount of time someone will go, okay, I'm I'm doing this master's and then that's it, and they just leave it blank and just assume that we therefore know what that's all about, what it involves. Who you did it with, you know how, how how you did it. So so for me, any any course that you feel is relevant to you is is relevant to you, and therefore could be relevant to the organisation. But actually, just make sure that you highlight what it is, and therefore why you think it's relevant. That's the, that's the main piece of advice that I would give. All right. Um, any anyone else uh, want to say anything on that or? Uh, best for the next question. Okay, so Rizu Sharda um, is asking about um, how is it uh, if your companies uh, may sponsor a visa for uh, people, candidates coming from, from abroad? In what situation that would be considered? Is there a level of uh, candidates um, no. where you start doing that or? Okay. Even, even if That's it's a, entry level, they could uh, have some help from the company. Yeah, we we help uh, always all uh, candidates we we hire of uh, uh, non EU countries uh, in order to get visa or to to help them for all the bureaucracy, <clears throat> all the issues they they have to face, um, and not depending on the level, of course. Uh, so for us, it's normal. Uh, in, we, we do it in a, in a normal way and during the, the selection, uh, during the job interview, uh, we already discuss about it with the candidate uh, and I think it's an important uh, point uh, and um, we, we are uh, prepared uh, to do it uh, and we do it in a normal way, as usual. It's the same for us at, at, at the EBU at Eurovision Sport. Um, uh, Eurovision would uh, would uh, provide. Uh, <coughs> I don't know if you can hear me, guys. Uh, I, 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 same at Eurovision, they would uh, they would provide uh, assistance to get work permits in Switzerland um, for um, for all candidates. Right. Uh, Fabio, there's. A question for you here asking about uh, Juventus' involvement in esports. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for the moment we are we are studying um, other clubs benchmarks uh, on esports. Uh, of course, uh, we are on this topic, but for the moment we, are, we have not entered into esports. 
but I think uh, next year uh, in 2020 maybe uh, we'll we'll join it also this because it's it's very important the sport in order to diversificate to uh, do activities as I, I I think I said before not only on the pitch but also off the pitch and to reach other audience uh, other than uh, um, football fans. Uh, uh, I think also to, to reach millennials, uh, to tackle uh, different uh, um, difficult uh, audience. Okay. Ben Pather sends a, a question that uh, I think it's for the whole panel because he says how much uh, media work is done in-house uh, and what opportunities exist for media professionals at your organization? Also, does sport journalism still play a crucial role in sports uh, coverage? Well, we're talking to Eurovision Sports, so I believe that uh, media is, you know, crucial there. Uh, also, I must um, tell you that uh, currently we have a position from Juventus uh, at our website, I work in sports.com, for a social media manager. And um, IMG is, of course, very uh, uh, involved in media overall, but uh, I will ask the panelists to add to, to that. I, I can start, yeah. but I, or Tim, if you want to go. Go, Pablo. Okay, so we have an open position on social media editor because we do most of our digital work in in house. Um, we hired um, young uh, people, but very very skilled uh, with uh, important experience, and I, I think uh, they they come from uh, all countries, not uh, not only EU countries. So. Uh, we are hiring now, so we are looking for social media editor to work uh, to support digital team uh, and strategy across all social media platforms, uh, uh, say Instagram, Facebook and so on. And um, they have to, of course, uh, support digital content creation, uh, work with press people, and they have to to speak Italian, of course, because uh, they have to work in Italy. So it's important as a language skill to be fluent in English, but also to uh, know Italian is strongly recommended and I think uh, um, also understand the all uh, branding issue and have uh, maybe a previous experience uh, in a digital sport. Okay. Uh, Tim, you want to go? Just to clarify, uh, Fabio was telling me before that although this position re requires Italian because you deal uh, with the, the media and journalists uh, in Italy, many other positions in Juventus don't necessarily require Italian. So they're becoming more and more international, opening offices overseas. So even if you don't speak Italian, uh, you can sort of apply for jobs there. Um, not, not this one on social media, though. Tim, if you may, um... yeah, well, yeah. I mean, I, I think it depends. It depends what type of type of media you're you're you're, you're referring to, because obviously we we have uh, you know I, IMG Media as as a whole as a business, and we you know obviously we have a studios and, and production business ourselves, so we do a lot of kind of uh, content production our, our, our ourselves. Um, we sell media, as you know, we acquire and we uh, we acquire and we we we, we sell media as well. Um, and, and, and also from a sort of digital media point of view, again, we some is outsourced and some 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 is in house. So you know, I I think it would be more specific as to what sort of media position um, that the individual was 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 kind of referring to. But I suppose as 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 a wide ranging answer, we we have a a lot of media um, of, of opportunities, and um, the guys will be kind of advertising our opportunities very, very soon within the next kind of few days. Okay. Glenn? Yeah, I, I mean, a bit like, bit like Tim, we, we are media. We, 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 you know, media pervades everything we do. Uh, if you're talking about kind of social media, though, in terms of social media um, kind of managers, yeah, we do most of that kind of our, our comms and our media, our social media is done in-house. We do occasionally bring in some external people to, to do some work for us. Um, 
but 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 yeah, I mean, in terms of in terms of that, we're a media business, so everything we do is media, whether it's news or whether it's sport, or whether it is the broader kind of programming, um, programming bringing our bringing our members together on drama, comedy, children's programming. Uh, outside of sports so it, it pretty much is is everything we do if we're not if we're not directly involved in media we're supporting it through technology or, or something else or or servicing servicing of content so you know it's kind of media is, is our business it's it's from end to end definitely Listen, last question I have for the three of you is uh, the entry door for them to get an opportunity with um, with your companies is right, normally is by sending a CV that will be, uh, as I hear, very quickly analyzed uh, at first, and um, and if you don't strike your attention right in the beginning, sometimes you know they miss the opportunity. Do you have any advice for people that are preparing a document to apply? Uh, for positions uh, in your companies? I, I, do you know what, I, I, would, I would say, I'd almost echo a point that I just made earlier, which I think is, is don't, don't be afraid to, to state the obvious, which is I think sometimes just because you think it might be obvious to you might not be that obvious to the, to the reader. So I would be, it's about being clear and concise, of course, you know, not, not waffling too much, but it's almost kind of saying like, this is me, this is what I've done, and this is what I'm looking to do. And actually here's the relevant experience that I've gained or qualifications that I've gained or studies that I've done to kind of demonstrate that. And, and that I think is a really, really crucial thing is just be clear, concise, and state what you're looking for and what you've done. That would be my advice. Be before passing to those, just um, to, to let you maybe compliment uh, Tim, uh, a few, a very sort of a clear sort of advice that people ask me sort of all the time things like uh, the length of the the cv or a picture or no picture to how much difference does it make please don't send we, we had one last year that uh, came through our system um a cv of 48 pages so don't do that possibly but, uh, yeah. Yeah. But apart from it, yeah, can you give some specific advice in terms of if you think that what would help them? Yeah, I mean, again, and I, and I think everyone, everyone has different opinions on CVs, you know, and I think actually for me, genuinely, when I read a CV, uh, it's the first three or four lines on, 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 the, on the person's profile that really gets me. And again, just to kind of echo what I said, if someone says, right, this is me, this is what I've done, and this is what I'm looking to do. And, and, and then it's kind of clear, and if they've worked for businesses that maybe are not recognizable brands, just make sure that you said, you know, this is X, Y, and Z and company, and this is what X, Y, and Z company does. Because, because then people are kind of, kind of, kind of clear. So, so no, look, I, I, I don't really have a view necessarily on how long that should be, but I would go back to sort of say, just make sure you're being very clear and concise as to the message that you're delivering, not waffling, I suppose. Right, Glenn and Fabio, you want to have a thing on that? Uh, yeah, I, if, I'll just go really, really briefly. I, I couldn't hear a lot of, of the question initially, but I was able to pick up a lot of what Tim was saying there. And I couldn't agree more. Be concise. Tell your best story. Um, you know, um, you know, you've got to you've got to represent yourself well, but it needs to be relevant to the to the job. Uh, you know, uh, to the job that's being that's being uh, advertised. So, so you know, I think brevity is 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 good, but don't sell yourself short. You need to tell your best story and and, to, and tell it effectively. Um, so, really, you know, I think I think Tim put it put it very very well. Uh, there's no, there's no real there's nothing right. much more I can add to that. Okay. Fabio, what grabs your attention when you see see? Uh, oh, yeah, no, I I think. Um, uh, there is no ideal CV, but I, I think uh, it's important. Uh, this is, the CV is clear, it's short, uh, uh, and uh, you can see through the, the CV also a bit soft skills, not only hard skills, depending on how you write your, your CV. And it's important uh, uh, to be sensitive about it. And I think uh, 
it, for me, to me, uh, technical skills, uh, languages, uh, and so on, uh, main duties and responsibilities, all, uh, uh, I, I think, all parts of CV, our CV are, are important. But it's important also how it's written, and um, I think it's important also uh, the school, all the, 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 the activity uh, carried out be, before uh, work. Okay. Listen, um, thank you so much. Really want to thank Fabio, Glenn, and Tim for participating uh, with us. Uh, Fabio will be there uh, in Lausanne in one month's time, on the 24th of uh, May yeah. at, uh, at the job fair. Tim told me that uh, may not, well, won't be there this year. We'll have uh, two colleagues of, of, of his coming uh, with IMG Endeavor. Uh, and Glenn still uh, to be decided, but we have already uh, some names of people representing um, Eurovision Sports that uh, will be there. Um, I would like to invite everyone uh, watching the video before the date, take a look at uh, ourworkinsports.com, see if um, you would like to, to attend. Um, and again, thank you so much. Apologies for the confusion with the technical things, problems. It is, it was the first, hopefully, the uh, next ones uh, will be better. Uh, but I think that the messages coming from you were very, very valuable to everyone watching. So even with my technical difficulties, uh, it was amazing to, to have you uh, here with us. So thank you so much. And yeah, and I'm hoping to see many of you watching uh, in Lausanne on the 24th of May. If you. Thank you and see you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you much. Thank, Thank you. you. Right. Thank you guys. Thank you Thank very much. much. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.